Hey everybody, welcome back to Bow and Arrow Garage. In my last video, I hinted to the fact that I bought a TKX 5-speed transmission to go behind the LS1 that I'm putting in this car. And when the paperwork, when you get it, they basically tell you to make sure that the bell housing is indexed correctly to the engine before you st install the transmission. And you actually get this paperwork and it looks pretty scary. It says, basically read this document. It is a legally binding contract. And basically what you're having to do is, is you're having to go in and check the indexing of the bell housing, make sure it's within spec. If it's not within spec, then you have to correct it with offset dowel pins. And this is so that the warranty on the transmission is not void. And so I've watched a lot of videos online of how to do this and everybody kind of glazes over kind of some of the stuff. And so I wanted to make a video that's just a little more concise and actually shows me kind of stumbling through some of the stuff. But this is what you're going to, going to uh, basically deal with when you're doing this. And so within Silver Sport Transmission and stuff, it, it actually gives you a list of everything you need to do it. And at the end, basically it says um, one of the things you're going to need is patience. And so I did this multiple times just to make sure everything was correct. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of, like I said, give you a short video and show you what I did to make sure that everything was good before I put the engine and transmission in the car and make sure that my warranty on the transmission is good. So once you get these measurements, you basically have to fill out some paperwork and send it in to Silver Sport Transmission or whoever you buy your transmission from. That way they have a record of it and they know that your warranty is still good. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and move into that and then uh, we'll give you a quick uh, conclusion at the end. So this is my cheap magnetic base uh, dial indicator from Harbor Freight. <clears throat> Normally this rod right here is about six inches longer. I ended up having to cut it down because there's just no physical way to get this thing to fit into inside the bell housing with, uh, with it as long as it was. So, so it was interfering so I ended up cutting it down and actually it ended up working out pretty, pretty perfect. The other thing is, is I ended up having to kind of put the V on the cutout of the flywheel and you want to make sure that it doesn't rock. You want no relative movement there so it's pretty stable. I mean just a little bit off and it'll rock so um, you want to make sure that that is set up that way and then I'll, uh, I'll get the uh, bell housing on and I'll show you how I set this thing up but um, I want to kind of just give an idea of what goes on when you do this so give me a second I'll get everything set up and we'll turn this engine around and I'll show you All right, so as I was saying, you want to make sure to get that in there to where there's no uh, relative movement. It's not a lot of access. And, and that's what I was saying. This is probably the hardest part is getting this thing set up. And so. Spin the engine around one more time. Just make sure I have clearance. You want to make sure nothing hits on the inside. And turning it around. And it's tight. No doubt about it.
And obviously if it hits, it would interfere with your measurement. So, all right, so now I'm gonna try to get my indicator set up. Okay guys, now that I got my uh, dial indicator set up, they want you to choose a random location. I've already done this, but I'll show you. This is my initial point that I chose here. You can see that my indicator is at zero, so they want you to rotate the engine around 360 degrees, come back to this point and make sure it's still reading zero. So I'm gonna go through that real quick and show you. So I'll spin the engine around. And I want to come back perfectly to that spot. So just a little bit. And I'm pretty close right now. So we'll verify that it's still reading zero. And there it is. And it's still on zero. So that's just uh, verifying that you're getting repeatable results. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna identify my highest spot. So I'm gonna turn it around and see what we got. I'm gonna do it in a one man operation, so I'm gonna do it slow. I'm gonna see what we got here. So slightly negative. I'm a little more than I wanted to there, but I have a negative, just below a negative seven. And there it's kind of hard for me to see. Let's see if I can get up under here. So that's a negative eight. Once again, it's a negative nine. Now it's back down to negative six. We're at a negative three. We're at a negative one. And we are at positive one right there. I'm gonna move it a little bit further. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna mark that. And I'm still at a positive one. And I'll show you that. So it's a positive one right there.
and now we're about a positive half and moving back to zero. So. So back to our original location and we're at zero. So what we need to do then is come back around to here and make this our new zero. So it's really, there's two lines here. This is where it goes up to positive one. This is kind of where it starts bring, coming back from positive one to zero. So kind of right in the middle there somewhere is gonna be our, our high spot. So I'm going to call that my new zero. I'm going to get it turned around there, and we'll make that our zero. All right. Once again, I'll try to show that I have a positive one, so I'm getting very repeatable results. So I'm going to turn this around to zero. Oops. Make sure we're perfectly at zero. And right there, I'm good. So, what we need to do now is come basically 180 degrees, and that should give us our maximum low point. So, we want to come around and see what our measurement is. So, I'm going to bring it around. We're about a 90 degrees right there. I want to measure it and see what we've got. And we've got about negative seven. And I actually went past just a little bit. I'm gonna measure it. I mean, I look at it, see what it reads, and then I'll go ahead and bring it back around. So we're about negative eight and a half right there. But I want to go ahead, and I mean, we're super close. I'll show you. We're not too far past. And see if I can get a good, or a good video of where we're at there. So we're about negative eight and a half. I'm going to spin it around one more time and just to come perfectly back to our line. And honestly, my mark might have been a little bit off anyway, but I'll just do it one more time.
and basically ended up coming a little bit past it again just where the engine wants to and I'm gonna do it one more time still at negative eight and a half so I'm gonna do it one more time guys And there we are. And it made absolutely no difference. We're still at negative eight and a half. So the thing is, is that's the total run out, but you end up dividing that by two because your center's in the middle. So basically we have a little bit over 4,000 to run out. So the spec max is five. So we are good to go. So that is basically the way that Silver Sport Transmissions recommends you do it. So uh, we got repeatable results. That's the big issue. You wanna make sure that you get repeatable results every time. I'm getting repeatable results every time and uh, I'm within spec. So we're gonna call it good. So anyways guys, this video was pretty long for a how-to video. I know when I'm looking at a how-to video on YouTube, I want it to be bam, bam, bam and, and get in there, get it done and, and go. But in this case, I felt it was necessary to go into a lot more detail. Obviously you saw that I had to cut down my dial indicator to get it to fit. And that's just one of those things. This job is pretty much a headache to do. Even uh, I think Silver Sport Transmission just saying you need to have patience. They're acknowledging that fact. So. And unfortunately on mine, at least unfortunately for YouTube purposes, but fortunately for me that I didn't have to do it, I didn't have to uh, change my, my dowel pin. So, so if you need to uh, see a video on how to change the dowel pins, unfortunately you would have to go to another channel. Um, but, and, and most of them do detail that, but that's one thing that I didn't have to do. It's really kind of looks like it's kind of a pain in the backside also, but that kind of is what it is. For my case, I'm thankful that I didn't have to change my dowel pins, um, so I was able to actually move forward with the uh, engine transmission install. So, so anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I want to say thank you very much for uh, joining in. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. Make sure you watch all the videos. That way the YouTube alg algorithm starts uh, pushing my channel a little bit more. Anyways, um, I want to say Merry Christmas to you. It's belated. But actually, I probably uh, recorded this video before Christmas. Um, I had been a little bit sick during the, uh, the, during the holidays. That's why it was a few weeks before I made a video. And then last week with the big freeze across the country, we actually lost our internet, so I wasn't able to make a video. But anyways, thanks again for joining in. Like I said, I, I appreciate anybody subscribing to the channel. And we hope to see you next time. Thanks and have a great day.